All right, you're good to go. All right, cool. All right, so here we're uh, a few days ago. Uh, there was a topic brought up on empathy, and uh, I think it was in the book sharing. And I had mentioned a book I had read, which was against empathy. And uh, it was not so much on the topic of removing empathy entirely, but it, of not letting it uh, overtake you to the point where everyone else is dragging you down. Um, so we wanted to discuss empathy, sympathy, compassion in this chat. And uh, so Tyler, what was your, um, what was your point we said earlier? Yeah, so I guess the, the main two words that are often, I feel like interchanged is our empathy and sympathy mm. and that the the basic the basic definition of sympathy is when you just you have a similar feeling so you're you're sh you you're sharing the feeling not in the sense that you are like experiencing this exact same thing as the other person but that you like if so, you see someone who's angry you know what it's like to be angry and you can sort of identify that feeling and share it in the same that you're in the sense that you're having the same feeling. Mm -hmm. Whereas empathy was, is a much later term. I think it was a German psychologist or something um, who coined it. And then it came into English from, from the term that he came up with. And it was in like the early 20th century. So it's pretty, pretty new as far as words go. And it was feeling into instead of like the sympathy comes from Greek and it just means with feeling. So this uh, fellow feeling. Mm -hmm. And so it's like the idea is that you are actually experiencing those feelings along with the other person. So you're, it's like a direct, more of like a direct experience uh, and that kind of go, tracks with what in that book you were talking about where you're you're like taking those feelings of the other person onto yourself uh and and so it gets into this like i the best example of the distinction between them what that i can remember is this was probably two years ago you know there was that a uh, gymnastics coach who had been like molesting all those girls uh, in up in like Michigan or something. And, oh, I, didn't, I don't remember uh, that. What's his name? N Nasser, I think. Okay. And so then there was an article where one of the dads at the trial had like tried to like rush to end like attack him and got like tackled by like okay. the bailiffs and things like that. And the one of the articles I saw about it, the author starts out by saying, Oh, I, I empathize with his, you know, his wanting to attack this guy who molested his daughter, but, and to me, I was like, you can't, you can't say I empathize, but because you are, you're taking on like the fullness of the experience of that person to yourself. And so to do, to truly empathize with him would be to say that like, you wish you were there because you would attack him too. Yeah. Uh, whereas you could sympathize with the anger because you've, you, you have been angry yourself, mm -hmm. but then, so you could say, I sympathize with his anger, but you know, that's inappropriate to do for, you know, X, Y, and Z reasons. Uh, yeah. So I think that's, that's a really good um, example. I think that distinguishes those, those two terms. So it's, I feel your pain and I understand what you're going through are completely different ideas. Um, Cause I feel your pain gets into the, get, gets into what I was talking about earlier of not letting the other person drag you into their feeling uh, too much. And what we had said before uh, Kalepa showed up, uh, was something along the lines of it's 
kind of a starting point, but it, it's not the entire experience. You don't want to just empathize. And uh, it, and I, I had said that it's a tool on your belt. It's not the whole toolbox. So what are your thoughts, thoughts on that? Uh, so um, a little disagreement, I guess. Um, I would say that uh, sympathy is appealing to emotion. Um, sympathy is feeling uh, what the other person is feeling. I have sympathy. I have, it's, it's an emotional experience. To where empathy, having empathy is, um, it's more to do with like understanding the framing. It's, it's, uh, I, can I just read something I wrote? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Like an opener thing. So, okay, the first one, have you ever heard the phrase, I have no sympathy for dot, dot, dot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next question, have you read an intro by, I get it, but I have no sympathy for dot, dot, dot? Or does that, or does that make, if you haven't heard it, does that sound like it fits in? Yeah. I'm, I've never like, heard get it, it, but that sounds but I don't contradictory. Okay, let me move on then. Uh, no, no, I mean, if, if that's something that you... No, they, they sound the like things that would have been said. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. I just like think what, it's a misunderstanding of what sympathy is. Word. Okay, so that's what I was saying. Let me move on, just read the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, we'll go for it. Break yeah. it down. So empathy is a dynamic thing. And my main problem with the opposition to it is besides wrongly defining it, that many people look at it simplistically or romantically which is, a largely, which is largely why it is confused with sympathy and compassion. Uh, many imagine, or like many things, but the Trinity, for example, people just haven't put much thought into it and subconsciously imagine that some just have it. It's just, it just hits them out of nowhere and boom, they got it. They just see things other, others can't for reasons we know not of. Pretty much the post-enlightenment psychic who is safe from stake burnings in this modern world. Uh, a lot of other things make up empathy, or maybe instead a lot of steps requiring a lot of skills allow for empathy to be had at the end of a quest or what have you. Uh, it's reading the room, tone, and body language, keeping any foreknowledge of that person or situation or whatever it is in context, intently listening and hearing the subtext of what's being said, not just the, the foretext. Um, empathy also isn't butterflies and rainbows. Uh, granted, most people understand that suffering can come from from deploying too much empathy or from deploying empathy, but I mean it in a different way. It's not just seeing the good in people or seeing why people do things in a positive light to justify them. It's equally to see the bad in people as well, to understand how they became Nazis or serial killers or so on. Uh, empathy is a large part of how detectives solve murders, how interrogators reveal lies, and how negotiators tap into what's driving the gunman or the person on the ledge. Uh, this side of empathy must also be juxtaposed with the other at all times, or else it's just naivety, as many criticisms, criticisms for actually, uh, as many criticize empathy for actually being. And inversely, with only the side, the only, only this side, it's just cynicism and seeing the worst in everyone. So you gotta juxtapose the seeing the good and the seeing the bad in mm -hmm. empathy. It's, it's both of those things are, becoming clear to you. Um, extreme self-awareness is probably the biggest gateway to extreme empathy. Once you become aware of your effect on everything in each moment and how everything's affecting you, you begin to apply that to other people and how everything is affecting them. It sounds obvious and it is a base level, but being intentional about it is a whole other thing and it's where the fruit is found. Um, but I, in closing, exact, empathy is exactly what this world re needs right now and it is exactly what it is gravely lacking. So that's, uh, yeah, I, I would just define empathy different um, to where, so like if sympathy is uh, this emotional kind, um, then to rightly understand empathy, I think it's important to understand how you have empathy, how you can have empathy. Um, yeah, so where that, that's what differentiates it is it's, it's a lot of different things.
coming together to create empathy? Well, my, I think, I think what at least I came from, came out of the Against Empathy book wasn't it, honestly, that's just a bad title because it's supposed to be pr provocative. Um, against empathy isn't really against empathy. Um, it's, it's a uh, cautionary tale against using it badly. Um, it's, it's, a, it's against use, it's against feeling something for someone that isn't also feeling that thing. It's, it's just like, I'm offended for you. It's just like, that's, that's a bad way to use empathy. <laughs> I would, yeah, but that's where I would just disagree with how he defined empathy and sympathy. Like, in my opinion, he has it backwards. Well, yeah, but the, the, the way that, the way that the, let's not, you know, you, we can, we can go with dictionary definitions and then we can go with the way that it's used in the world. And I think that you're using the, the way that it's used in the world is the opposite of the way that you just define them. What do you mean? Uh, well, can I jump in? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So the, what, what you were describing sounds like compassion more like, and then that's the, the compassion the, is a response. Yeah. So I guess it would, it would, right, right, right. right. And that's what's kind of from empathy or sympathy. correct. That, that's exactly what I was going to say. So Word. the way it's like empathy. And I think what the guy was saying in, from what Kevin described in the book is that it's like, I'm against only empathy. Like if, if all you're doing is feeling empathy for people, then like you're not doing anything to help the people that you're you know you're claiming to empathize with and yeah. you're just it, it can become and that if you if you over empathize then it can be uh disabling because then How's, you're just you're just kind so? of like drowning in all these other people's feelings and you're never you're never alleviating it which is like that's the the i would think that the the you the utility of empathy is that then you can from that base then go out and try to have compassion by helping that person in that situation uh, mm -hmm. where uh, and so okay what like, would sympathy going too far be sorry can you repeat that what would detrimental sympathy be i, if, I don't know, think it's empathy goes too far yeah um, around that's what I'm poking at. Is the, I, I think uh, sympathy is just much more of a, um, you are, you're just feeling things. So it, it's a very uh, neutral kind of thing. And that's where it gets, oh, the bad, the, the misuse of it is in acting like sympathy means more than it really is. When it's all it is, is like you're having the same feeling that another person is having. So that's really just all it is, is you're, you're having the feeling and then you identify some other person or animal that you then project things onto like, and then you just say, Oh yeah, yeah I sympathize with them. And so that like, it almost is like a, there's nowhere to go from sympathy. You just sympathize because you just have feelings and it's like, Oh, okay, great. Like you're not really, you're not really saying, much so it's one of those it's one of those like platitudes where people just say like oh i sympathize with that and it's like yeah. okay well what that doesn't really mean anything that just means like i feel those emotions too sometimes like it's like okay great yeah <laughs> so, it's just it's describing it's it's describing something in the past that's just like oh yeah I, I felt like that before and and i think that goes to your point um kalepa about people when they say they sympathize they're they're thinking that that means they're empathizing but because they're actually sympathizing that's why it doesn't spur them to do anything it's just like a throwaway comment uh and so that is where i think in the the usage of the words that that is kind of uh how it ends up playing out and and kind of speaks to what you were saying but i think empathy is 
often also falls prey to a, a similar thing because, and that, I think that is because the terms are used interchangeably um, yeah. by a lot of people. And so both words can be used for the same situation where you're just not doing anything. And so you can, you can use sympathy incorrectly in that circumstance, or you can just, you can empathize and then not do anything about it. And in the, and if that's the case, then you, were you really empathizing? Like that's, that's where I feel like if you're truly empathizing, then that's just like the, the empathy is the trigger for then the, the actions that follow. Well, because it becomes uh, empathy can, uh, empathy can have physiological effects on you. And so a physiological effect of say somebody else being in pain would probably be you end up, you end up crying because that person is in pain and you have, uh, they call the, it's, it, they, again, with the sympathy, empathy overcross, they call it sympathetic, um, uh, it's, it's a symp uh, sympathetic pains or something like that, where um, sometimes a husband being in the same room as his wife giving birth will have birth pains. Mm. And it will, it's, it's, it's a physiological thing. That's more akin to empathy because you're physically like feeling the thing, but they call it a sympathy thing because that's just a, the is, technical term they're using. Well, yeah. And I was gonna say, isn't that from like the sympathetic nervous system? Like, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe the terms had just got like mixed up. And now like when they say that it's coming from something else. Yeah. Because, because sympathy, sympathy is usually talked about physically where empathy is usually talked about psychologically. It's just like, I am psychologically feeling the same things you're feeling about. And they, and it's a mind body problem of they're not bridging the gap between what's physical and what's mental. It's like, it can be both. And so when they say a sympathetic pain, that what they're, what they're really meaning is in empathetic pain uh, uh, manifesting physically uh, through, through, through the processes that you're, you're going through to, to the degree where a guy is having labor pains and it's like, what is happening? So, so yeah. I have something, I have something just along the lines of pain. I have something that I wanted to read and it's, um, okay. it's a book about uh, English synonyms. Mm -hmm. And so one of them is pity and compassion. So it says the pain, which one feels at the distresses of another is the idea that is common to the signification of both these terms, but they differ in the object that causes the distress. The former, which is pity, is excited principally by the weakness or degraded condition of the subject, the latter by his uncontrollable and inevitable misfortunes. We pity a man of a weak understanding who exposes his weakness. We compassionate the man who is reduced to a state of beggary and want. Pity is kindly extended by those in higher condition to such as are humble in their outward circumstances. The poor are at all times deserving of pity, even when their poverty is the positive fruit of vice. Compassion is a sentiment which extends to persons in all conditions. The good Samaritan had compassion on the traveler who fell among the thieves. Pity, though a tender sentiment, is so closely allied to contempt that an ingenuous mind is always loath to be the subject of it, since it can never be awakened but by some circumstance of inferiority. It hurts the honest pride of a man to reflect that he can excite no interest but by provoking a comparison to his own disadvantage. On the other hand, such is the general infirmity of our natures and such our exposure to the casualties of human life that compassion is a pure and delightful sentiment that is reciprocally bestowed and acknowledged by all with equal satisfaction. So uh, it makes me what the, what that, uh, I always like that that uh, little like couple paragraphs on it because I think where empathy comes in is that what it it started as like oh I'm empathizing as in empathy is better than sympathy and I think that is true but only because empathy is supposed to lead to compassion but when you only empathize when you just stop there or like just 
kind of simple uh, sympathy, you it often just turns into pity where you look at people and you go, oh yeah, like I would, oh, I see that you're in this uh, situation. Like I would hate to be in that. It's kind of like similar to the, the uh, like, oh, you know, like the prayer of like, you know, oh, thank you God. Like, I'm glad I'm not one of those miserable sinners like all these other people where you start, you start using your, your sympathy or this false empathy to look down on other people and it, whereas if you you know if you see someone who is in a a worse condition than you then you would if you're truly empathetic then you would take the next step and you would you would demonstrate that with your compassion so i It's a, a, a definition where we're Peterson Harrison it up right now. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, um, I would like, I guess a boy to bullet down would say empathy is uh, like competent sympathy, uh, informed sympathy. Um, it's not, it's not, it's where sympathy is about this like feeling what they're feeling, understanding because you feel what they're potentially feeling, what this, what emotion was invoked in you because of seeing this thing. That's more sympathy to where empathy is like, okay, here's this homeless guy who's acting crazy right now or whatever. Um, he probably can't get a job because he doesn't have an address or he's got some addiction, can't get help for that addiction because of this, that, and the other, this thing, this thing, this thing, he's bored all day. And so he's probably just like trying to fill uh, his boredom with drinking alcohol or some kind of high, just because you're bored all day, you have nothing to do. Um, he's a bit standoffish towards me because most people don't like him and don't treat him great. Uh, authority figures probably run him off and it depends where you're at. If you're in Hawaii, then like, you'll even get like kicked awake and like, you know, that kind of stuff. It's, it's the keeping all of that in mind that allows me to have empathy and say, I really don't agree with what you're doing, but I, I get it. Um, I get why this is happening. It doesn't justify what is happening, but it lets you have an understanding of why this is occurring, why this person is doing this, why this came to be, why, it's, it's deploying empathy to reach that uh, competency. Um, and so it's, that's why I brought in the, the detective and the, the negotiator and stuff. It's, it's like a skill set to better understand. Um, and yeah, then yeah. from yeah, there, that's... you have the ability to better use compassion in an effective way, in an effective manner. And that, that does so one thing that i have heard is that like uh and it goes along with the detective or hostage negotiator idea is that uh serial killers are highly empathetic but that they they lack all sympathy and it's it allow that that super high empathy is what makes them effective in their trade Strategy or their craft and, right yeah. like they 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 stalk they their know victims what hurts. and they they know what hurts and they can they similar to like um, uh, torture, torture experts, right? Like they 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 have a, a high degree of empathy, but no sympathy, and it's because they can put themselves in the mind of their prey, and know what they're going to do, and so therefore yeah. they can be one step ahead of them. And so I think that that does um, go along with the the what you're saying, uh, and so the I, I'm unclear on the where we disagree other than just the definition but it seems like the the way that we're talking about it the way that we sort of analyze it seems pretty in line and so like to me that's a much that's like it matters more than like oh this is how i define it right like yeah. we're not writing a dictionary well, we're talking about human interaction and, and right. that and so so the, i think I, I'm, I'm tracking with what you're saying. Let's yeah. visualize it. So would would like a timeline be uh, sympathy, empathy, compassion? 
It's like where the compassion is the interaction to help. It could be interchangeable as yeah. far as sympathy and empathy. Um, you could be struck by this emotion that makes you deploy empathy. Like, oof, whoa, that was, you know, and then, then going into like, okay, why is this to where someone without empathy would just have this emotional feeling and they may take action. That was a thing I, I didn't necessarily agree with of like the, the inaction from sympathy. It's just that the action is not uh, competent. It's not well informed. And so it's, it's just this emotional response of like, yeah, I'm going to uh, buy a pair of Tom's because it's going to give uh, kids free shoes and they need shoes. It's where if you, you know, have the correct understanding of like, well, there's shoe stores over there. Uh, that's a whole business. Um, you know, this is, this is not, a, a, yeah, that's just an example, but it's misplaced sympathy uh, because of a um, lack of empathy. So, but going back to your thing, it can be either or of like seeing all of this, uh, how it works, like just seeing like, oh, this is why this happened. And then boom, that strikes you with a, a strong emotional response. And then you begin the verb of compassion mm. or vice versa. Yeah. But like I think what you said about is the end. Like sympathy is just a, it's like an, in the same way as empathy, where you, you don't like, you don't have like a thought and then you feel like, it's like, it's just the feeling. It's like the thing that strikes you. Boom, boom. Right. Yeah. And where, so like, that's where they're similar. But then I think sympathy is much more common in this, like, whereas like everybody has sympathy and, and in some form, like yeah. you'll sympathize with things. Whereas empathy, like you were saying, is more something that you can hone and, and, and like really, you can, it's deployable. Whereas sympathy is just going to be your feelings. To that experience you're, that. that yeah. You're, yeah, exactly. And so if you see an advertisement for some, some like, you know, marketing thing, like, oh, buy, buy our mattress and we'll plant a tree somewhere. And, and it's like, okay, so like you can say, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm sympathizing with the rainforest or like, it, it just like, it doesn't really make sense. And you can just, you can use sympathy to rationalize behaviors that you wanted to do anyway. And, and so it's, whereas the empathy has a much more of like a causal link with the action that then happens and you can empathize for good or for evil in, in those ways that we just talked about. Uh, and so, so yeah, I just, when people say they empathize though, it's, it's sort of like, you know, where you can, you can like a propositional belief, right? You can say, Oh no, I'm empathizing with them. But then it's like, well, let's, what did you do about it? Because if you didn't really do anything, then I kind of think that you were just sympathizing and you just used the word empathy because in your mind, you think of empathy as this higher form of sympathy when I think they're more, um, they're categorical distinctions. Like you're not, it's not, they're not on the same spectrum. It's there's sympathy and then there's empathy. Uh, and, and so like the compassion is, is A proper the, result. Right, right. And you can yeah. sympathize with something and then have compassion for that person. But I wouldn't see those as being like the sympathy caused the compassion. I would think more like you had, and that's where, like uh, you were saying, Kalepa, about if you, you can have that feeling, but then through your, your skill of empathy, you can then convert that sympathy into compassion even though yeah. it's like, whereas if you're like empathy, if you are like a therapist, right? Like you're Super necessary. <laughs> exactly. And so you are like, you're going into it ready 
to empathize because that's your job in order to then help that person. And so, whereas sympathy, it's just like, like you said, like, it just like, it hits you and you're going to, but whereas if you're kind of like, you're already in the mindset of empathizing, then you are, you're going to be able to convert that into the compassion much more readily than sympathy, which is just kind of like, oh yeah, I, I feel that. Okay. So if we put this on like two tracks, uh, the way that you guys just described that back and forth would, uh, would kind of be empathy and sympathy. Empathy and sympathy are at the same point. The difference is one is informed. And so the compassion that comes out at the other end is either informed or uninformed compassion. And whereas sympathy would probably end up being uninformed compassion and empathy would be informed compassion that would come out at the other side. But both done wrong or done nothing with would just be pity. <laughs> or I don't, yeah. I don't think you can, or, I don't or, think you can sympathize negative. wrong because it's not really in your control. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Sympathize can, sympathy can lead you astray might be a better way of saying that. Well, I would say if you're, if you're yeah. not, if you're emotionally unstable, yeah, then like your, your sympathy is just, it's like, you're going to be like, like, uh, well, both like you're, you're like, you're like path. emotionally, you're like emotionally ADD. Like mm -hmm. you're just like, Oh, I sympathize with that. Now I sympathize with this. And, and so, but because it's just like, you're all of these emotions are just hitting you from one moment to the next. And so you, I, I suppose, but I wouldn't say that's like you're sympathizing wrongly. You're, you're just sort of not good at maintaining well, your control over your emotions. I think, I think there's a depth. I think there's a depth difference that you just brought in there. Cause if you sympathize easily, then you would sympathize a lot. But if you, uh, if you empathize uh, easily, then you would have deeper feelings more. And so if you empathize too much, you would have way too much of these deep feelings and it would impact you uh, in a deeper, more destructive way if it went wrong. But if you sympathize too much, you just wouldn't have any focus in your sympathy. The, the potentially, the, the only alleviation you have though with empathy is uh, a lot of other stuff to kind of divide that burden mm -hmm. um, because it isn't just this like overwhelming emotional thing that's just like I have no idea what to do with this where like you know it's it's at least with an understanding of like and yeah that can lead to you know if <laughs> you see the whole system that led to this thing it can be very uh it's like uh, Ecclesiastes, um, I don't know the, the chapter and verse, but with much wisdom comes much uh, sorrow and with much knowledge comes um, grieving or something like that. Um, it's a similar thing to that of like, you know, if you see it, you see it. You know, Pandora's box has been opened. Uh, what are you going to do with that? So yeah, I would say that's true, but it's, there's at least some stuff to grip onto instead of just this overwhelming like emotional i have no idea what to do with this crap <laughs> uh, yeah. one thing i was going to say real quick um mm -hmm. a, a, a different way to think of empathy um might be a little confusing because we've been talking about emotion but like gary vaynerchuk uh will call it uh like emotional intelligence eq mm -hmm. um and so it's it's the bringing together of heady knowledge and emotion. So it, that I was thinking about that just a minute ago, and it does make it a little um, more interconnected in that sense. Yeah. But it's informed emotion. Yeah. Okay. And it, but it's also like uh, Charlie and, and Jacob have been talking about recently of like or multiple, just brought it up multiple times of like some people can't lift weights and that's just 
not everyone can do that. Some people have, you know, are this way. Some people are this way. And some people can draw super good. Some people have voices that are crazy. Some people, you know, all that stuff. Um, and I would say that emotional intelligence is another one of those things that like some people just have more of that. Um, and some people are more, more, I don't know. This is <laughs> so I, some people are more sympathetic, but I, was, I, I can't, I can't sign on to the idea of emotional intelligence mm -hmm. uh, for statistical reasons. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but I understand what people mean when they say it. My, yeah. my issue with it <laughs> is that the, the idea that you can be more, that some people are more emotionally intelligent is that then it's like, oh, well, you're either born with it or you're not. And I, I'll grant that, okay, yes, for let's say personality reasons or your, your, uh, your life history that you might, some people are more emotionally sensitive to, to things, or they can, they, they pick up more on what other people are feeling. And, but then at the same time, similar to like the, the lifting weights analogy, well, you can train yourself to be more empathetic. And, totally. and, and, and like, but it's, and that's why you can, that's, isn't that the reason that psychologists, you know, therapists that they have to go through schooling and certification and all of these things is because like, if that, if it was just a straight up, like, Oh, who has the highest emotional intelligence yeah. will hire yeah. them. Right. Yeah. Like, but, but it, I don't think it really works that way. And so that's like the, the, the double-edged sword of the emotional intelligence analogy well, is that if it's tied too closely to like the, the formal idea of like intelligence, but again, I'll grant that when most people use it, they're not talking about that, right? They're, they're talking about having an emotional skillfulness. Yeah. Yeah. I, think it, I, I would, I would attribute it more to skill because what I think we're talking about is like the, is like, the, the IQ at birth question is just like, no, I don't think that's, Worth, I don't think yeah. that's accurate. I think you can actually learn a lot of this stuff yeah, and it's but, just harder for other, so for some people to learn some emotional intelligence than others. But I think you can get to a degree where that is viable. Um, that's like, you can have, uh, so there's, something popping up right now is that there's a guy uh, there's a guy online that's he every time somebody disagrees with him he checks to see whether or not they're an artist <laughs> and and because what what he what he brings up is that artists have a harder time seeing the world that is not the world that could be and so it's just like so every time somebody disagrees with him, he'll just say hashtag artist because <laughs> he looks into their profile and they say what they've done and all this other thing, which is funny because he, he, point, him, he himself <laughs> is he himself is an artist, but um, but Sounds he like an artist thing but he went through training to be able to see the world as it is, and so um, and and I I don't know if I would call myself an artist, but I'm a writer. And I have noticed in myself issues in uh, in is oughts of like, man, I really wish that the world was like this. And I keep trying to treat it like that. And it's just like, no, but that's not how it really is. And I, I through, through having to deal with that, I find it really difficult to operate in the world. Hence, I'm in my parents' house. But the the thing that i've come to realize in a lot of say these kind of dialogues or or paul or or anyone else is that um find finding out how how the world is is not impossible <laughs> you can yeah. learn these things you can train yourself into the knowledge of it and so i would it, you know it's to to what you were talking about, Caleb, with empathy being more informed, is that I wouldn't call it an 
I, I wouldn't call it emotional intelligence. I would call it informed emotion. Word. Um, I would say uh, my the reason that I um, do stick up for empathy um, when it's not like it's the you know opposition. All those words are very loaded and very like above. Uh, but just the the opposition to the focus or the highlighting, the lifting up, the hey everyone come look at this thing that we should probably do better at. Um, Improvement, not worship. I get, I get, yeah, I get the opposition to it of like we're such a fatty society, we're such a, a trendy society. Um, where these these buzz words come up or these coconut oils or these you know there's all these different stuff that's like yeah that'll be here and gone next month um so i get that but this this fact of the ability to develop empathy or emotional intelligence or informed emotion um is that's that's why i stand up for it and stick up for it is because it isn't just this uh character trait that's given hereditary character trait or something it's a developable thing if you're intentional about it if you're um yeah if you if you want to develop it if but i will say that there's definitely um the people that's temperament are way have a huge head start like like bodybuilding you know like or lift, lifting weights in general just athleticism mm -hmm. there's people that are just their short twitch and long twitch muscles or fast twitch and short twitch muscles are just really much more developed and like they can go farther than me and my long, long muscles will ever be able to go. You know, like I'm six, four, I have to go twice the distance with bench or whatever. Like it's just not going to happen as much. I can still get strong and be able to bench and be able to do whatever and lift stuff. Not to that extent, though. So there's still some scale to it. But mm -hmm. yes, it is most definitely developable. Developable, And that's, that's like my, exactly. You know, that's, that's why I am a uh, ambassador for it, I guess. Because I, I think that it's something that a lot of people, especially this year more and more, um, if, you know, there's just a lot of, yeah, with empathy, it's, you know, the informed side of it, of like understanding the people that you disagree with, um, why they think that way, actually, steel man, why they, they think that way. Because mm. um, there's just, yeah, it, it can lead to a lack of empathy can lead to like a romantic thought of like, evil people are evil because they're evil. They do evil things because they are evil, not because they're the good guys in their minds, like fully, like the framing, like they, it's not just some thinly veiled, yeah, we're the good guys, right? Like, no, they through and through believe it, um, just as you do, just as you do, just, so I think that, yeah, the, uh, the championing of empathy needs to be done correctly, obviously, but um, I think it's a quite the powerful tool for us to- it Informed empathy. <laughs> yeah. Take it enough, another step further. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, but that's something I don't like. Uh, these sub words. Yeah. Like, it's like love. Um, because of the way that we treat love in our culture, people will talk about love being detrimental or love being a bad thing. Yeah. I can't stand like, the way love no, is, that is, doesn't, is, is talked about. <laughs> and it, but, it can't like that's it's not love then mm -hmm. you know like cool that there's this thing that was detrimental it's not love because love is this this purity thing this pure kind um so it's a, a similar thing of that with a yeah it, some different stuff that we i, I think verveki just had a bit of an outburst the other day uh and he he said it was like one of his best talks recently and he was just kind of riffing like uh he he was explaining his entire like course set in one video and it was fascinating but 
he got to the point of love and he just saw him get angry <laughs> because he's, he said, love is not an emotion. <laughs> It's just like, thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate you saying that. Yeah. It's, uh, but yeah, it's, it, there's, there's a lot of stuff that we um, try to over categorize, but uh, it, it also comes with, it also comes with the, uh, what is it called? Vernacularization of these terms to the degree where you, we have completely gray zoned the difference between sympathy and empathy to the degree where they're like swappable. Yeah. It, it's so. Yeah. The, and yeah. that's the, this, the swappability is I think because empathy gained this heightened status where you can use it. Uh, but, what you're really doing is you're not empathizing. You're just saying that you're empathizing because it makes you look good uh, to, because people have this idea that like, Oh, empathy is better than sympathy. And it is, but it's, it's like the proof of your empathy will be in what you do next, not in your stating of having empathy. So just in line with Paul's uh, most recent video, uh, do not take the name empathy in vain. (laughs) <laughs> and, that word, yeah. Uh, and so, yeah. Do you guys have any any last things to uh, any f- closing statements you want to make? That was a good conversation. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I had a there. I had a great time. Uh, that was that was that went a lot better than I thought it would because I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm woefully <laughs> unprepared for this talk because I don't have that book anymore. I well, I mean, I, it's, we don't have to have an academic conversation. It, it's yeah, yeah. it's more like everyone, everyone I think has come into contact with these words and they know they kind of have this, it's almost better that way because everyone kind of thinks they know what the words mean because they have had experiences of both of them. Like I would mm-hmm. imagine every person has, I mean, everybody always is sympathizing with somebody or something. And then yeah. most I would say most people have empathized with other people before. And, and so it's just like, it's, a, it's fun to kind of drill down on those and, and talk about them. I have one short little thing that I just want to read okay. that I think is, is interesting. So compassion is altogether a moral feeling which makes us enter into the distresses of others. We may therefore sympathize with others without essentially serving them. But if we feel compassion, we are not, we naturally turn our thoughts towards relieving them. Hmm. And so that's where I think the, 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 the word empathy is not in there, but I think it, it is in the sense that it's the, the, the bedrock of the compassion that would necessarily cause you to serve others. Mm-hmm. And I, and I think in, in society, sympathy has become the negative form of pity to where when you hear sympathy, you think, don't pity me. That kind of, that kind of feeling of just like, it's, no, it's, 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 it's so, it's, what is it, what's that word? Condescending <laughs> to when, yeah. when you hear it, when you hear, and it's, oh, I, and it's, I think it's because sympathy is usually just, it's by its nature is empty and fleeting. And so when people, they have this idea of sympathy that is empathy. And so then therefore, when they hear somebody telling them that they sympathize, but then they don't see the compassion from them, then they say, oh, well, you must actually pity me. And, and you, or, must, you must hold me in contempt because otherwise <laughs> you would have done something to help me. Yeah, or if they poke at it, at you saying that and saying like, what, what do you mean? Like, what do you, and they don't have any, there's no like, well, I've seen that you, you, you went through this, you went, you experienced this, this happened, or, you know, some kind of empathy to explain that feeling. They're just kind of like, yeah, like you, don't, yeah, you, you still don't, don't understand really, my, you don't, get you don't it, really so. care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or at least yeah. you don't, you don't get it. Mm-hmm. Like maybe you do care, but you don't get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. But, yeah. Cool. All right, I'm going to stop the recording now.